hello um, so yeah here I am for Facebook live to have a bit of a share with you all about how to inspire the man in your life when I wrote about this a week ago when I just simply asked the question for how women inspire the men in their lives um, I was really really surprised I was surprised by how many women um, felt quite negatively about it how many women felt that to inspire a man would be a chore or a problem um, yeah I was really surprised that there was a sense that if a man needs to be inspired there's something wrong with him so I guess the first point I want to make up front is to make the distinction between needing to inspire somebody to show up in life and and just be a regular human being or inspiring somebody to truly be the best version of themselves now there's a big difference like if a woman is needing to inspire a man to get out of bed to um, to fulfill his basic daily living and so on then in that way then that's just always going to be hard work so I'm not talking about going into mother mode where it's like you should do this and you should do this and you should do this because one nobody wants to be mothered but also that's not really inspiration that's kind of almost attempting to drag somebody through life can people see the distinction just maybe share a, a message say hello if you feel like it's something that you get that there's a difference between inspiring somebody to be present in their life or inspiring somebody to be the best version of themselves because I certainly know in my life as a single woman I was living my life to the best of my capacity in the most full way possible and yet there were things that as a single woman I didn't know about myself there were things as a single woman that I didn't know how to open and tap into there were parts of my love my radiance my magnetism that weren't expressed as a single woman whereas being in a relationship and being in a relationship with a man with a strong masculine essence it evokes my feminine to be more fully expressed I can be connected to my feminine essence when I'm single and I can express that through the way I move the way I live and the choices I make but it's very different when that masculine essence is being consistently evoked and empowered and supported and loved by a masculine energy so feeling the masculine energy of my partner consistently evoking me causes a much deeper level of opening and so whilst I was living a good life as a single woman as a woman in a relationship I feel so many more parts of me alive and accessible and available how many of you can relate to relationship adding juice to your lives the times when you've been in a relationship that supports you to feel more of who you are and feel more connected to who you are maybe just share a comment in the in the chat box just to say yes if that's something that you've had the experience of in your life so I've seen there's a few comments there from my prior question and yeah Joanne saying she appreciates the the distinction between the two types of inspiration and yeah I'd love to hear from you if if you've had the experience here we go um, Corinne says absolutely and she's also felt that she can't vocalize that yeah it's it's interesting times because we live in such strong times of being independent and having our own backs and taking care of ourselves and in a lot of ways as women and I know this was the case for me was 
you know, it wasn't okay to be vulnerable. It wasn't okay to need or want a man. It was much more like having to show the world that I could do it myself. And whilst I could do those things myself, it's so, so much better sharing that space with a loving partner who is consistently there having my back and supporting me with the choices that I'm making. And if we, if we look at masculine energy and feminine energy in their pure forms, like feminine energy is love. Feminine energy is the dance, it's movement, it's flow. Feminine energy is inspiration. Whereas masculine energy, masculine energy is consciousness, it's stillness, it's the platform on which the dance happens. So when a man is in a solo space, he could very happily just rest into consciousness and maybe retreat into a cave and meditate all day long. That would be the healthy version of masculine consciousness doing its thing. Now in, in today's life, masculine consciousness is not given a lot of space or encouragement for resting into the stillness or the resting into nothingness. So men will sometimes look to, they'll look to escape via, possibly via alcohol, possibly via television or, or other outlets. So partly what the feminine brings is this dance of light and movement and love and radiance and magnetism that moves in front of him and the man's like, oh, Yes, I can be drawn into life by that. I can be drawn out of my cave. I can be drawn away from the sport, away from the television. And I want to be the space. I want to be the platform on which this feminine energy dances. So in that way, the, the feminine inspiration calls a man much more strongly into life. And when a masculine man feels the feminine essence calling him in, he lights up. It's like the, our genitals reflect this really beautifully because if we look at a woman's genitals, the vagina, it, it opens, it's an invitation. The vagina itself is an expression and an invitation. And when the penis is near a receptive, an open vagina, the penis goes and stands to attention. So there's this sense of erectness that comes in the penis. That erectness also happens in the man's body when he feels inspired by a feminine woman. And I quite commonly hear in spiritual circles, in workshops and spaces that I hold for women, women quite commonly say things like, well, how do I get him to step up? When are men going to step up? When are men going to, you know, step up more fully? So I hear this a lot. And what's important to understand is there's, there's a demand in that. There's kind of an energy in that that's putting men down and actually not inspiring men. It's quite common that the woman who's busy wanting her man to step up will probably also be putting him down and nagging him, demanding of him, possibly trying to tell him how to be a man, what he should do, how he should behave. Now, I'm sure many of the women who are watching right now know that when you're demanding and nagging, and trying to tell a man what to do and how to do it, you get less and less and less of what you want. But when you communicate from your feeling self, from that place of like, oh, it feels so good when you touch me like that, babe. My whole body comes to life when you touch me in that way. Oh, thank you, thank you. When we share with a man what feels good 
when we share with a man what it is that touches us when we share with a man our frustrations from a place of like oh my god I, I, I feel so overwhelmed at the moment I don't know what to do next I've, I've got work to do I've got household chores I've, I've got things to take care of for us and I just don't know which way to turn and I'm actually I'm really tired too from that place it's not a demand it's not asking him it's simply expressing feelings and we were talking about this at women's retreat just a few weeks back and one of the things I tuned into with the women is that it's very common for women to not give the men very good quality data so to use a live example one of the women shared how her partner will go to the shop and buy a chocolate for her because she's asked for a chocolate but he always always comes home after years of marriage he always comes home with the wrong chocolate but she's never ever told him it's the wrong chocolate she's also never told him which is her favorite chocolate so there we have an example of a woman not providing a man with adequate information for him to be able to bring support and nourishment to her so our feeling expression means that we need to give men high quality data high quality information let him know what hurts us let him know what feels painful let him know what it is that causes distress in our lives and let him know what it is that brings us joy and laughter and uh, <laughs> closeness and connection what it is that has us want to be close to him another thing I remember having a sharing about on that particular women's retreat was one of the women saying that her partner made plans to go and catch up with a mate rather than spending the time that she'd wanted to spend and she made it okay for him like she let him off the hook by going that's okay you go do what you need to do it's it's okay but inside she was really hurting so in that instance what happens is she's not supporting the man to know what her needs are she's not supporting the man to know that yeah it does actually hurt a little so because we're frightened of having expectations of each other we're frightened of being demanding and nagging we go the opposite direction where we become really complacent and women often go into that good girl mode of I won't expect anything of him I won't ask anything of him if he makes plans to go and do something with a friend rather than to spend time with me I'll just say that's okay but in actual fact if the woman's hurting inside and she doesn't let him know then that's not honoring the quality of connection in the relationship it's actually it's a lack it's a lack of integrity in the relationship because how can he meet her in her feelings when she hasn't shared her feelings with him does that make sense to people I'd love it if you could just say yes if you're following what I'm saying or if you have any questions about what I'm saying just feel free to type it in the chat box because I do think this is really common in this day and age where women have been taught to be really well self-contained we've been encouraged to take care of ourselves to have our own backs to do our own thing and so then we become afraid of saying to a man oh yeah I feel a bit disappointed that you're going out with him and I want you to have fun with your friend and I would love if you and I can have some time together really soon see how in that you can share hurt you can share how it feels you can allow space for him to have fun with his friend and put it forward that you would love there to be time for you and him to connect and in that it's vulnerable it's vulnerable to say yeah this hurts it's vulnerable to say 
can we please prioritise some time for us? A man's natural instinct, particularly a masculine man, his natural instinct is to want to protect the feminine. So when we share our feelings, then he wants to be part of that. And it's not a manipulation, it's simply claiming space, claiming space for our feelings and letting our feelings be the inspiration for him. So that then when he's making choices, he can actually make his choices based on how he serves the woman in his life, how he serves the relationship in his life, and how he supports the values of his relationship. So I'm just going to read a few of your comments. Um, Robert has said emotional communication between a man and a woman is important. So, so true, very true. And that's where we often rip ourselves off. And in some ways we end up rejecting ourselves when we don't feel comfortable to include our feelings. We often think that the other person's neglecting our feelings, but it's much more common that we neglect ourselves by not including our feelings. So the way I see it is that as women, our feelings are data and the more we share our feelings and when I say feelings I mean what is alive today what's alive for you right now not dumping 10 years of past um, emotional drama onto him not throwing at him every single itty bitty upset but what's alive today do you feel good do you feel sad do you feel hurt do you you feel disappointed? Do you feel connection? Do you feel love? Do you feel sexy? Do you feel aroused? Do you want some space? Do you want to be near him? Because that kind of emotional content, that's inspiring for a man and causes that sense of, yes, I want to serve this woman. I want to serve this relationship. I want to commit to her and go deeper. So I'll just check some more comments. Corinne says, yes. Sasha says, loving this so much. Awesome. Thank you, Sasha. Michelle says, yes. Jade sends a love heart. Leonie says, yes. Justine says, yes. Sasha says, yes, and thank you. Sasha says, the difference is you're not coming from wounding. You're coming from truth. So it's more inviting. That is so true. It's crucial that as women... We come from a place of wholeness, not trying to make a man make us feel better about our lives, not trying to shame or guilt a man into making us feel good about ourselves, but taking care of ourselves, taking care of our own happiness, taking care of our joy, our love, what nurtures our heart, what makes us feel good, so that then when we share from that feeling place with him it comes from a place of what's current what's truth today on david g says it's also necessary to understand the underlying dynamic of course of course there's always so many dynamics going on in relationships jade says feeling so paramount to connection definitely Leanne and I'm David G. Hell yeah. So yeah, it feels like this conversation of inspiring the men in our life feels like it's hitting the spot. And also the communication about our feelings. Because we live in a time where people spend a lot of their lives in our heads and there's this tendency to be overstimulated and on computers and working and really busy and doing stuff mentally but not being connected to our bodies and being afraid of both the power and the vulnerability of feelings that want to animate and move through our bodies but when we give ourselves permission for our feelings to move through when we give ourselves permission to express and it could be expression through sound, it could be expression 
through words, it could be expression through the way we hold our body, then that is the most beautiful invitation for a man. And that's very much when he will step up and move into that place of, yes, I want to support this woman. Yes, I want to serve this woman. And the more we identify, uh, not identify, the more we can remember to connect with our feelings, to own our feelings, to share from our feelings, then the more we're clued into our own data, then the more responsive a man is to supporting us and serving us. So that's everything I wanted to share tonight, unless anybody has any questions. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, just um, type them in the chat box. I'm just getting used to this Facebook Live thing. I've only used it a couple of times before. But my intention is to come on every Monday night and share on a topic that's current to what we're working with at Tantric Blossomy. So Om Devaji has uh, shared here. I agree with the prevalent false feminine. Two, collective emasculation. Three, the return of matriarchy. Do you think this may be a result of men emasculating themselves to reflect it from an external source? I think the way I see it is that we had women being oppressed. If we look back to the 50s and 60s, women were oppressed. And then fast forward to the 80s and you know, women got power and women started to claim their voices. So the pendulum always swings. So then women went into that mode of emasculating men in order to win back, in order to claim space, in order to be heard. But now we are moving to a time of a balancing. But also from a polarity perspective, what has happened is that women have gone into a masculine mode. And I know I've done it. Many of the women I work with have gone into a strongly masculine mode. And so when women go into a strongly masculine mode, then our feminine gets left behind. But also if, if women aren't in the feminine mode, then men pick up the feminine space because polarity means that there will always be activity in the masculine polarity, activity in the feminine polarity. So if, if the woman is occupying the masculine polarity, then the men occupy the feminine polarity and so what's happening right now is there are a lot of women coming to tantra and feminine work where they're really starting to value and own the role of the feminine right now women are hungry women are more than hungry women are slowly dying inside really because when that feminine energy is not alive in our lives we're slowly dying and so being in the masculine energy it dries up our feminine juices it dries up our feminine aliveness and so what's happening now is that women are starting to recognize that they're dying without that feminine essence being alive so we're, women are starting to move from the masculine polarity into their feminine polarity and at the same time, we still need to have masculine energy. We still need to be able to direct our careers and create structure for our business and our lives. So there's place for women to have healthy masculine. But if we live in the masculine all the time, it's exhausting, it's depleting, it's unhealthy for us, but it's also incredibly unhealthy for the men in our lives. So women are needing to live from their feminine essence much more fully. And when we move back into the feminine essence, then there's space for the men to move back into the masculine essence, the masculine polarity. And so part of what's happening is the rebalancing, right? The pendulum swung this way, it swung that way. And now women are realizing that we need that feminine energy. We need that as part of our vibrance and aliveness. Let me just check a few more of the comments. I'm on my phone, so 
excuse the shaking. So Leonie says, feels like she's too masculine and it's difficult because her and her partner work together running a business and she's exhausted. Yeah, and it's important if you work together in business to find ways that you can support each other's masculine and feminine so that the woman can be nourished in her feminine energy and the man can be supported and empowered to be in his masculine energy. And also if you're working together, find ways for the woman to be nourished and in spaces with other women. Because as women, it's a big way of how we recharge by being in spaces with other women. Sasha Grace says there's such a huge internal balance of the masculine and feminine energies for her right now. And she's feeling it in the collective. That's awesome. And definitely it's time for that. Uh, Sasha's feeling that women are stepping into self-honoring and we're stepping into our queen. And the men are learning to understand however which way what honoring actually is any thoughts on this well i think this is where we as women are responsible for communicating to men what's important to us what's of value to us what it is that we need to feel honored what it is that we need to honor our own our own queen uh, and says thanks so I've responded to everything that's there and as I was saying before I'm going to do this each Monday night and over the next six or seven weeks I'll be sharing topics that are related to a level one program so we've got blossoming woman level one coming up the first weekend in September that's the first and second of September here in Melbourne then we've got being man level one coming up the 8th and 9th of September in Melbourne and so I'll be sharing topics related to our level one courses over the next six or seven weeks and definitely in Blossoming Woman we talk in a lot of detail about how to be in that feminine receptive energy how to be the feminine invitation in the way we move the way we speak the way we set up our lives so that we are really aware of how to embody and live that each and every day how to communicate from our feelings the other event that we have coming up next weekend is men women and love and men women and love is actually an event that rod and i are co-creating and next sunday will be the first time we're doing it and men women and love came out of a conversation that rod and i were having over breakfast a few months back where I was sharing about my desire to get these messages out more widely and Rod suggested the men and love talk that we did uh, back in May. So men and love was something that was an inspiration that came out of our love and then men, women and love is a follow on to that. So if any of you are interested in exploring this work in more detail, please do come and join us next Sunday, the 22nd of July. For men women and love it's going to be a beautiful day of women embodying feminine energies men embodying masculine energies and taking our connections much deeper how is it that we can really for women how can we inspire men and for the men how can you evoke the best qualities in your partner and yeah it's been it's been awesome to share with you all tonight I've enjoyed seeing people's faces popping up. I can see right now Maria's on, Michelle, Gail, Justine, Anne, and, and a bunch of other people. So thank you so much for being here. It's been a delight to share with you. I'm going to have some much, much needed rest right now. I just did three days of bodywork training, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So my eyes are looking a little bit tired right now. Um, but yes, thank you for joining me and I will see you on Facebook Live next Monday night.